All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing <clears throat> Song of Kali by Dan Simmons. This book came out in 1985, probably one of the first ones he wrote, if not the first one he wrote. Um, I've got, <clears throat> Dan Simmons is one of my favorite writers. We pan through my library here. I've got all of his books right here on this shelf. Anyway, we've reviewed about a third of those books on the channel. We'll eventually get to all of them. But for today, it's Song of Kali. Let's talk about the cover first, because you know I love graphic di design and cover illustration. This, I love the font. Um, I love the way the words are laid out. I love the little icon picture in the middle. It's just kind of a classic 1980s-esque horror novel type design. Cool. Give it a thumbs up. As for the book itself, I'm going to be straight with you. I've read every Dan Simmons book. I just reread this one. And I got to tell you, this is probably my least favorite of the Dan Simmons novels. That being said, it's still pretty entertaining, which means all of his other books are wildly and entertaining. Okay, so um, Song of Kali, what's it about? First of all, I'm just going to read you this opening paragraph because the opening paragraph is the best part of this book and it's dynamite and it really sets up for the darkness of the book. Okay. Some places are too evil to be allowed to exist. Some cities are too wicked to be suffered. Calcutta is such a place. Before Calcutta, I would have laughed at such an idea. Before Calcutta, I did not believe in evil, certainly not as a force separate from the actions of men. Before Calcutta, I was a fool. Before Calcutta, I took part in marches against nuclear weapons. Now I dream of nuclear mushroom clouds rising above the city I see buildings melting into lakes of glass. I see paved streets flowing like rivers of lava and real rivers boiling away in great gouts of steam. I see human figures dancing like burning insects, like obscene praying mantises sputtering and bursting against a fiery red background of total destruction. The city is Calcutta. The dreams are not unpleasant. Some places are too evil to be allowed. To exist. It's a book about Calcutta and some dark things that happened there. Um, I googled, um, I knew Calcutta was in India. I googled it, learned a few things about it. Wikipedia page, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, um, probably an all right place, probably not as dark as this book makes it seem. But um, what is, what's going on in Calcutta? So Bobby Luksak is a reporter for a magazine. Um, he gets, <coughs> excuse me, I'll edit that out. He gets an assignment to go to Calcutta to write an article on the mag for the magazine. Now he tells his friend, I'm going to Calcutta to write this article about such and such. And his friend is like, don't effing go, dude. Don't go to that city. It's f***ed up. Don't go there. He's like, I went there once. Never go there again. Be warned. But he's like, I'm going to go anyway. You know, Bobby is like, I'm going to go anyway. Uh, it'll be all right. And despite the warning of Calcutta being just f***ed up, he takes his wife and baby, his new baby. Yeah, let's all go to India. Let's all go to Calcutta, where everybody tells me things are f***ed up. Now, it is a strange city with strange customs <clears throat> that are initially horrifying to Bobby and his wife. Although they learned that these customs are um, normal to uh, the people of India. And, uh, you know, it's just poverty, the random death that just is laying on the streets and the gutters, people's bodies just lying there, um, nobody caring, nobody giving a shit. Um, 
animals and filth and things like this, you know, but they're, but the people of Calcutta are just like, yeah, this is the way it is. It's just, it's just how it be. And they're horrified. And then, um, he decides to go off on a little adventure, a little trip to write about a bridge that's being built way out in any, way out in the woods. And, uh, he ends up involved with this <clears throat> cult of Kali, the goddess of destruction. Now, if that isn't a warning to stay away from that group of people, I don't know what is. But anyway, he goes anyway. He gets wrapped up into some pretty dark things, some human sacrifice, some animal sacrifice. I mean, the goddess of destruction, she bleeds the souls of her followers just to give her life and sustain her life. And it's just, it's got a lot of dark, supernatural, occult, magic in the story and um a lot of dark alien sort of ideas that an american would not think of but then again that the people that live there are just like yeah it is what it is and it's yeah don't worry it's just kelly the goddess of destruction don't worry about it don't worry about it just bring her a human sacrifice you'll be all right you'll be all right that's kind of the story and it just spirals into some darkness um, uh, it's told from the first person of, uh, Bobby, um, which is okay. He's a little bit of a boring guy. Um, and, but the story is dark. It's a horror novel for sure. I, um, think that some of his other horror novels that he wrote later, like Carrie and Comfort and, um, you know, what, what, what else did he write? Uh, Winter, uh... I can't, I, The Haunted House, there's, he wrote a bunch of horror novels. I'm trying to see across my library and read the titles, but my vision is so up that um, maybe to get my vision back, I should uh, sacrifice a goat to Kali. That's a good idea. Okay, so I give this book a, um, I'm going to give it about a 6.5 out of 10. Better than average for a horror novel, just not as great. It's all the other Dan Simmons books that I love. There you go.